This videotape will show you some of the many operations which can be performed on the drill press. These operations are center drilling, straight drilling, counter boring, counter sinking, reaming, and tapping. After viewing this videotape, you should be able to write down the safety procedures you should follow in the shop while operating the drill press, explain how and where the various drill press operations are performed, and explain the setup procedures that go along with each of the operations. Whenever you are working around machines with moving parts, you need to be extremely careful, both for your own welfare, as well as for the welfare of others around you. Always wear your safety glasses. Remove all rings and jewelry. Keep sleeves above the elbows. Use a brush to remove chips from drilling operations. Since all operations performed on the drill press create a lot of twist or torque, it is important that the workpiece be clamped securely for both personal safety and precision. Some of the work holding devices you may use on the drill press are the straight vise, the angle vise, or clamping work directly to the table of the drill press. You should never attempt to hold any workpiece by hand while performing any drilling operation on the drill press. In this demonstration, you are going to go through the procedure of drilling a one quarter inch hole into a piece of plain carbon 1020 steel. For any drilling operation, the speed of rotation of the cutting tool and the rate that it is fed into the workpiece are the two most important considerations. You can find the correct drilling speed for any size drill and for any type of material by referring to the machinery's handbook. However, you may also arrive at a close enough approximation by using the simplified formula of RPM is equal to cutting foot speed times four divided by the diameter of the drill. Some inexperienced machinists have a tendency to use too low an RPM when using small drills. When you refer to the machinery's handbook, you will find the cutting foot speed for plain carbon 1020 steel using a high speed drill is 100. Using the simplified formula, 100 times 4 divided by 250 thousandths equals 1600 RPMs. By going directly to a chart, you can see that for a cutting foot speed of 100 and a drill diameter of 1 quarter inch, the RPMs on the drill should be 1528. For RPMs of this value, a variation of plus or minus 100 RPMs is acceptable. To determine the feed rate, you can again refer to the machinery's handbook. The general rule for drills of 1 8 inch to 1 quarter inch in diameter is 2 to 4 thousandths per revolution. For drills of 1 quarter inch to 1 half inch in diameter, the feed rate is 4 to 7 thousandths per revolution. So for this demonstration, you can use a feed rate of four thousandths of an inch per revolution for the one quarter inch drill. The next important step is setting up the proper work holding device to secure the workpiece for drilling. You will use a straight or standard machinist vise to hold the work and clamp the vise to the table with T-slot bolts. You can use the center drill directly to locate the center of the hole to be drilled. But if you want more accuracy, you should use a wiggler set to locate the hole center. Place the wiggler in the drill chuck and make it run true. Position it over the center of the hole and line it up with a prick punch mark on the workpiece by moving the table and the vise. Lock the table in position and check the bolts holding the vise for tightness. The spindle should be extended far enough towards the work so that it can be pulled up to replace the wiggler with a center drill in the drill chuck. Turn on the machine and center drill the hole. When you center drill with a combination countersink and center drill before drilling the hole, 
This prevents the drill from traveling and missing the true center of the hole. When you have completed the center drilling, shut off the machine. Remove the center drill and replace it with a one quarter inch diameter drill. In this operation, since the size of the center drill is close enough to the diameter of the one quarter inch drill, you will not have to change the RPM setting on the machine. When you are drilling large diameter holes, you will have to make RPM calculations for the center drill and then decrease the RPM for the drilling operation. With a one quarter inch drill securely tightened in the drill chuck, be sure to remove the chuck key and then turn on the machine. You can bring the drill down by hand to the workpiece to drill the hole or you may use the power feed at a setting of four thousandths of an inch per revolution as determined in the machinery's handbook. Power drilling will sometimes give a smoother finish to the inner surface of a hole than you could obtain by hand drilling. During the drilling operation, you should add a few drops of cutting oil or lubricant on the drill. This gives a better finish on the inner surface of the drilled hole. Having completed the drilling operation, you can now perform another drilling operation, namely counterboring without changing the setup. In counterboring, you are enlarging the hole to a proper depth with square shoulders on the bottom to accept a socket head screw. Counterbores are equipped with guides or pilots to keep the counterbore centered in the hole. You should always add a drop of oil on the pilot to prevent it from binding in the hole. You will have to decrease the spindle speed for counterboring. Again, you can find the speed in the machinery's handbook or calculate it using the diameter of the counter bore. Another operation you can perform on the drill press after you have drilled a hole is counter sinking. This operation cuts a chamfer in the hole to allow the head of a flathead machine screw to be flush with the surface. Counter sinks are available with different chamfer angles ranging from 60 degrees to 120 degrees. Reset the spindle speed of the drill press for the countersinking operation to the setting shown in the machinery's handbook. Or use the rule of thumb, which is one half the drilling speed. Reaming is another operation that you could perform on a drilled hole using the drill press. Reaming produces holes that are very accurate and have smooth finishes. To produce a well reamed hole, you need to allow enough material to be removed so that the reamer cuts rather than polishes the hole. Properly secure a machine reamer in the drill chuck and adjust the spindle speed to about two thirds of the drilling speed for that size hole. You should use a power feed whenever available or as fast a feed as possible which will give a smooth finish and accurate hole size. Keep the hole well lubricated with cutting oil and always remove the reamer from the hole before stopping the machine. You can perform tapping operations by hand on the drill press after you have drilled a hole to the proper tap size. Tap drill sizes can be found in the machinery's handbook. Secure a center in the drill chuck and use it to hold the tap in a vertical position. As you apply a slight pressure on the feed handle of the drill press to hold the tap vertical, feed the tap into the hole by turning the tap wrench with the other hand. To start the tapping of holes that go through the workpiece, you should use a taper tap. If you are tapping a hole that does not go all the way through the work, then begin with a taper tap and finish up with a plug tap and bottoming tap. Keep the tap well lubricated during the tapping operation and keep reversing the tap to break the chips in the hole. So far, all the operations you have seen have been performed on relatively small diameters. Let's look at a drilling operation of a large diameter hole. To drill large holes of one half inch in diameter or greater, you would use a radial arm drill 
poles of this diameter are frequently drilled in large castings. When drilling large holes in a casting, it is not necessary to go through the center drilling procedure as pilot holes are usually provided. You can clamp the workpiece directly onto the drill table and align the drill on the part to be drilled. You will still have to determine the correct RPM and feed rate for the size hole and material you are drilling. If there is no pilot hole in the workpiece, then you will have to center drill and proceed with step drilling until you have reached the desired diameter hole. Let's review what you've seen on this videotape. You saw the safety procedures you should follow in the machine shop while performing certain operations on the drill press. And you were shown the procedures to follow in performing center drilling, straight drilling, counter boring, counter sinking, reaming, and tapping on the drill press. Drilling and other operations performed on the drill press are basic to the machine industry. Knowledge and skill in the use of the drill press are important to all machinists. Thank you.